Okay, so we've been talking about vertical asymptotes and domains of functions, but not only can they have vertical asymptotes, they can also have things that are called horizontals or oblique asymptotes. So here we have, a, you know, to kind of talk about what it is. A vertical asymptote, if that is like an imaginary vertical brick wall holding the graph back, then what do you think a horizontal asymptote would be? Well, a horizontal asymptote would be very similar. It's like an imaginary horizontal brick wall. So horizontal, of course, would be running this way. Uh, and an oblique asymptote is something that is going to be running kind of slant. It can be, you know, this way or this way. Um, sideways, sort of thinking about it. Now, the weird thing about horizontals and obliques is that the graph can actually cross over those. A vertical brick wall, or a vertical asymptote rather I should say, is a very sturdy brick wall. The graph will not ever cross over those. But a horizontal and an oblique asymptote are kind of more spongy. The graph can actually sneak through them, but only on the horizontals and obliques. Okay, we're going to look at some um, graphs here, and we're going to try to figure out um, some stuff about it. So here we have um, we have a, a graph, and I want you to see that we have some dotted lines that's kind of in a reddish color, and I'm going to make those a little bit more pronounced here. So we're going to find the domain and the range of each one of these. Now talking about the domain, remember we're talking about from the x values, looking from the left to the right. Well, this function is going to continue going out forever and ever and ever in this direction and also to the right. The only problem that we have is this one spot right here and that would be at where x is negative 1. So our domain is going to be the set of x's such that x cannot be a negative 1. Now we're going to talk about the range. Remember range is the y values. So we're talking about from you know, low to high. So as we go up, the first place that we encounter a y value is going to be just on the other side of the x-axis. This range is going to go from 0 all the way to infinity, but we're not going to include 0 because it acts like an asymptote and holds that graph back. This will then affect our y-intercept, uh, um, and our, sorry, our x-intercept, because this graph is going to follow along the x-axis. It will not actually touch uh, the axis itself, so we have no x-intercepts in this um, ex particular example. We do, however, have a y-intercept. We have a y-intercept right here at 0, 2, but there are no other y-intercepts. Remember, you can technically only have one y-intercept, otherwise it's no longer a function. Okay, now we're going to read off our asymptotes. Um, horizontal asymptotes, so that would be an imaginary horizontal line, and that's actually what they have done here with this red dashed line. This line is coinciding with the x-axis. Remember, that has an equation of y equals 0. So our horizontal asymptote here is y equals 0. As far as a vertical asymptote, we have that drawn here in red. That is this sort of imaginary brick wall that's going vertically, and that coincides right here with an x value of negative 1. Now notice in our picture here, we do not have any kind of a red dashed line that's indicating an oblique asymptote or a sideways one. So we do not have an oblique in this one.